Hello everyone, welcome back to my class once again. Today we will discuss about incomplete dominance and co-dominance, two very vital topics under genetics. And both of these two types of dominance fall under post-Mendelian genetics. That means they do not obey the proper Mendelian laws. Okay. Today in this class we will discuss about incomplete dominance and co-dominance with their proper definition, proper examples. And at the end of our discussion, we will try to draw a kind of comparison between these two types of dominance. So come, let's start our discussion with incomplete dominance at first. At first, we should start our discussion with the definition of incomplete dominance. Its proper definition is given in the description box. Just go and check the proper language. But still, for our simple understanding, we can define incomplete dominance like that when in any heterozygous organism, the dominant allele cannot suppress or mask the effect of the recessive allele completely, then such kind of dominance effect is known as incomplete dominance. That means dominant allele cannot express itself completely. Okay. Let's try to find out the effect of incomplete dominance with the help of a proper example. And a good example of incomplete dominance is found in snapdragon flower. Snapdragon flower. It is also known as dog flower. Its scientific name is Anterinam. Okay. In snapdragon flower, we may find two kind of variants. One is red color, homozygous red color flower. This is red in color. And another homozygous feature is white in color. So this flowering plant is white in color. If we cross both these two types of homozygous plant and try to find out the nature of F1 hybrid individual, we will have this kind of hybrid organism for the F1 generation. Very interesting, this organism will not be of red color. Rather, it will possess a completely different pink color. Here is the exception. Here, the dominant red allele cannot suppress the effect of the white allele, the recessive white allele completely. And the color appear for the F1 generation is pink in color. Now, if we self-cross any two such kind of F1 hybrid individuals with each other and try to find out what will be the outcome in this F2 generation? Then we have to inbreed, inbreed any two such kind of F1 hybrid organisms. So let's inbreed or self cross two kind of pink colored snapdragon flower. Now we will try to find out the type of F2 generation offspring with the help of a Punnett square. So for that purpose, let, let's draw a Punnett square. So come, let's draw a Punnett square. These are the gen, uh, different chamber of the Punnett square. Let's put the symbol for male and female on the Punnett square. Now, as both of these hybrid individual are genotypically same, they will produce same kind of gamete, right? So here are the gamete produced by this individual capital R and small r. This individual will also produce same kind of gamete, capital R and small r respectively. Now, let's put the genotype of the F2 generation offspring. Here, we will have a offspring with capital R, capital R genotype. Here, we will have a hybrid offspring with capital R and small r genotype. Here we will also have another hybrid individual and here we will have a homozygous recessive individual. Now let's write down their phenotypic characteristics, right? This individual will bear red flower. This one, as this is a hybrid individual, it will bear a pink colored flower. This also bear the pink colored flower. And as this is a homozygous recessive, it will bear a white color flower. Now, if we try to stress the phenotypic ratio in the F2 generation in this cross, we will have the 
phenotypic ratio of F2 generation, we will have one red flower, one is to two pink flower, two is to another one white colored flower. This is our new phenotypic ratio for F2 generation in this incomplete dominance cross. Now let's try to find out its genotypic ratio, right? Let's find out its genotypic ratio. What will be its genotypic ratio? Genotypically, this one individual is homozygous dominant. So let's put one for that. Another two genotypically hybrid individuals are present in this Punnett square, right? So let's put two for that. And the last one, one homozygous recessive individual. So let's put the one for this recessive individual. So here we can observe that both the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio for this incomplete dominance cross are exactly same. And this is the vital difference between the Mendelian monohybrid cross with that of the incomplete dominance. I think you got clear idea on the incomplete dominance. Now we will discuss about the co-dominance. Co-dominance means no dominance at all. That means in any hybrid organism, if both the alleles of a same gene is present, they will not exhibit such kind of dominant and recessive relationship between them. And both of those alleles will almost express themselves equally in the hybrid heterozygous organism. The proper definition of codominance is given in the description box. Just go and check it out. On the board, we will now describe the phenomenon of codominance with the help of a suitable example. In some type of cattle, we may find two type of coat color. They are body color. One is red in color and another, this genotype represent white in color. Now, if we cross these two type of cattle and try to find out what will happen in the F1 generation, we will have this kind of F1 hybrid heterozygous organism. Now, instead of expressing either of the parental character, that means either red coat color or white coat color, they will exhibit another completely different coat color that is known as Rowan variety, Rowan color. Actually, in this type of coat color, they almost exhibit equal number of white and red fur on their body. There are almost equal number of white and red furs are present on their body. That means both of these parental alleles capital R and capital W are expressing themselves almost equally in the hybrid organism. Now come let's try to find out what will happen if we inbreed or self cross to such kind of F1 hybrid organism, right? So let's do a inbreeding. Taking two F1 hybrid organism. What will happen then? We will try to trace these type of cross in the F2 generation with the help of a Punnett square. So come, let's draw a Punnett square. Here is our Punnett square. The male and female symbol. And as we all know, as these two hybrid organisms are same in nature, they will produce same kind of gametes, right? Capital R, capital W. Now, let's try to trace the kind of organism produced in the F2 generation. So, here we will have capital R, capital R genotype. In this pocket, we will have capital R, capital W, the hybrid heterozygous organism. Here also we will have another hybrid organism. And in the last pocket, we will have a homozygous WW genotype, right? Now, let's write down their phenotypic character. 
this organism is almost same as these parental combination right so it will be red in color this one as it is a hybrid organism it will produce ruan variety of coat color right this also will produce the ruan coat color and this will produce the white coat color so after completing the punnett square let's try to find out their phenotypic and genotypic ratio let's find out their phenotypic ratio now here in the punnett square one red coat color cow or cattle will be produced so let put one for that then two ruan varieties are present in the f2 generation let's write the two is two at last there is one white coat colored cattle right so one for white so this is our phenotypic ratio now let's find out its genotypic ratio genotypic ratio this first organism is homozygous for capital r allele right so let's write one for that then there are two organisms heterozygous organisms carrying both the capital r and capital w allele right so let put two for that and last another homozygous ww homozygous dominant obviously they are all dominant in nature this is for capital w capital w so here is the genotype again we got the same kind of phenotypic and genotypic ratio here also which is a great deviation from the proper mendelian monohybrid roles so in that respect we can also consider the codominance as a deviation from mendelism so from today's discussion we got clear idea and we can easily say that the incomplete dominance and codominance both of these phenomena are great deviation from the proper mendelism right so that concludes our today's discussion we will meet again with another topic in our next class till then goodbye